The Castor V21 cask and its contents have been in dry storage on an open air pad at the Idaho National Engineering and Environmental Laboratory since 1985. In September 1999, the cask was transferred by a straddle carrier to the INEEL Test Area North Hotshop facility for a thorough visual inspection of the cask internals and its contents. The cask was set up in the center of the hot shop, surrounded by a scaffold for manned access to the bolts of the outer secondary and the inner primary cask lids. In this sequence, the inner primary lid with the bolts removed is being removed from the cask with an overhead crane. The operation is a sensitive one because of the tight clearance of the lid with the cask and requires a cask lifting fixture and lift guide rails for the remote operation. During the inspection process, which spanned several days, the inner lid was replaced at the end of the daily work to protect the contents. The underside of the inner primary lid holds two concentric overing seals, visible here as black and gray strips. The outer polymeric seal is the black strip on the left, and the metal overing is on the right. The two seals were also inspected. With the primary lid removed, the tops of the 21 commercial fuel assemblies are visible within the grid work of the borated steel basket that ensures the configuration of assemblies in the cask. Once the primary lid was removed from the cask, the fuel assemblies in the precision seal area of the cask were exposed to the environment. To protect the finish of the precision seal surface from damage, such as by inadvertent contact by remotely operated tools or a fuel assembly, a circular steel seal protector was placed on the seal area. The seal protector always remained in place while the primary lid was off the cask. The visual inspections of the fuel assemblies, the basket assembly, and the inner walls of the cask required the removal of the fuel assemblies from the fuel tube in the basket. The fuel assemblies were removed with a crane mounted lifting fixture designed to engage the top nozzle of the fuel assembly as seen here. The lifting fixture aligned itself to the nozzle by two prongs that engaged in the alignment holes in the nozzle. Remotely activated lifting dogs securely engaged the inside rim of the nozzle. This system ensured the secure controlled removal of the assemblies from their fuel tubes. Once the fuel assembly was removed from the fuel tube, the entire lengths of the four external surfaces of the fuel assembly were inspected by three remotely operated video cameras to establish the condition of the stored fuel. The cameras had zoom capability with pan and tilt motion for complete close-up inspection of the fuel rod surfaces and spaces within the array of rods. The inspections revealed that the condition had not changed since the 1985 inspection. The surfaces of the fuel rods were coated with a very thin, tightly adherent oxide and crud layers. The double layer structure of these surface oxides was inferred from the modeled appearance of the surface of the rods at the grid spacers. The inspections found no increase in the oxide layer thicknesses, no formation of a loose oxide scale and no accumulation of loose oxide scale or particles between the fuel rods 
on the grid spacers or on the bottom nozzle. The empty fuel tubes were inspected over their entire length using a miniature radiation resistant pencil camera. The camera was deployed using a hot shot facility's overhead omnidirectional manipulator. The camera and its light were mounted at the end of a long steel rod. The miniature camera has a diameter of approximately one quarter inch and a length of approximately two inches. It is mounted to the bottom end of the steel rod between Teflon fins for physical protection. The whole camera assembly was lifted into place over the fuel tube with the remotely operated multi-axis manipulator. The three zoom cameras mounted above the cask were used to guide the camera down into the 13 foot long fuel tubes within the cask. The inside walls and corners of the 21 fuel tubes, the bottom brackets upon which the fuel assemblies rest, and the cask bottom that is visible at the bottom of the fuel tube all were inspected by camera. The fuel tube walls were inspected over their entire length of approximately 13 feet. In general, the tube walls and the cask bottom were clean and free of corrosion or evidence of failure. Occasional exceptions were mineral stains left over from the cask dewatering in 1985, as seen at the bottom of the fuel tubes in the sequence. The only features on the fuel tube walls were the grinding marks, the machining marks, and welding discolorations from the original basket fabrication. In general, the cask and the basket surfaces had an as-milled surface finish that was bright and reflective, indicating that no corrosion had occurred. The general condition of the fuel tubes is shown by video sequences from several fuel tubes within the cask. Samples of crud and particles were retrieved for analysis using tape mounted to a roller or to a pad. The crud and oxide layers on the fuel assemblies proved to be highly adherent. Only small amounts of sample could be recovered as seen by the material embedded in the fuel rod impressions on this roller tape. 